Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. We are exploring a, um, uh, a MacBook Pro 2010, I think this is, that has apparently a GPU failure. Um, now obviously the extended recalls on all of these is all over now. So if your GPU fails, you have had it and you need to buy a new laptop. Um, now, firstly, before we get going, I want to give all credit to Lewis Rossman for the repair that I'm about to demonstrate because I've been watching his videos and this is where I got the repair from. Now, in this particular instance, this logic board, when you run Apple Service Diagnostics on it, exhibits all the symptoms of a failed GPU. But in fact, it's not the GPU, it's the power supply to the GPU, which we can fix. So, I'm going to demonstrate what this is. Let's start off by starting up the laptop or the logic board. So, I'll put power on the logic board and my charge is not working, so I need to unplug it and plug it back in again. Okay, so we've started the logic board up, we're plugged in, we've got fan spin, uh, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a look at this capacitor down here. Now, I'll show you where this is and what this capacitor does, and we'll understand what the actual problem is. So, let me have a quick look through this schematic. Right, so now over on the schematic, we've done a search for C9560, which is the capacitor in question. Now, this circuit that we're looking at here, let me just zoom in so you can see what this is. Whoops. So this is the power rail that powers the graphics chip. So let's scroll over to the right here. Our output from here is PP1V5 GPU reg. So that is 1.5 volt power to the GPU regulated. Um, so what this does, this takes in a power rail from up the top left here. So we've got PPV in S5 HS GPU. So this is the power line going to the GPU. It then goes through this regulator, which ensures that the GPU can only draw so much power and so on and so forth. And it comes out as PP1V5 GPU reg. Now C9560 is this capacitor here. This is a decoupling capacitor, which smooths out the voltage. If this fails, our voltage will be incorrect. So let's find out what this capacitor is currently doing. So we're gonna set our multimeter to voltage and we're gonna check it. So we should have 1.503 volts coming out of this. Let's see what we're actually getting. And we're actually getting nothing. So this capacitor has failed entirely. There's no power getting to the GPU. So what we can do now, this capacitor may recover if we apply heat to it. Now this is where the age old story of baking it in an oven comes in. Is the old story is if you bake the, the board in an oven and you reflow or you otherwise heat up the GPU to a certain point, the GPU will come back to life. What is actually happening is that you're heating up this capacitor which causes it to recover. So let's do that now and observe the result. Right, so we're going to put heat onto this capacitor. I'm going to warm that right up. All right, let's back off and let's start the board again. And now, when we check that voltage, as you can see, we now have 1.5 volts. And it's just dropped to 135 again because the capacitor's failed, but you saw for a moment there we had 1.5 volts, which proves that this capacitor is in a state of failure. So let's replace it. Now this is actually my first time doing this, so I'm working entirely on theory here. Okay, so. Before we remove it, I'm going to take this fan out of the way to give myself more space to work. I'm going to leave the heatsink on the CPU just because that will just heatsink away the excess heat uh, that the uh, hot air station is applying and just make sure that I don't do any damage to the CPU or the GPU, which would be catastrophic. Now, obviously, I'd have more space to work if I remove this heatsink, but what are you going to do?
Okay, so that's our capacitor removed. Now the replacement capacitor is larger in size because it's hard to get the compact ones. Ideally, we want to replace it with something that's not polytantalum. However, I'm not sure what the alternatives are yet because as I mentioned, I'm new to doing this. So I'm replacing with another polytantalum. Um, however, if we allow for the fact that um, this one has lasted the best part of four or five years, it's probably safe to assume that the replacement will last another four to five years at the lifetime of the laptop, so it'll do. The only disadvantage is um, that the one we're replacing with is a larger capacitor. I can't find one of the same size. So as you can see, it's a big fella. We're gonna have to make some room for it. Now that looks disastrous, but it's actually not too much of a hassle. We can move this, um, we can move this coil a bit to the left, and then we can just expand this ground plane just so we can solder onto it. So let's start by moving the, um, uh, the coil over. Okay, and we'll just touch up those solder connections now. All right, so that's our coil moved. And I'm just gonna check that we don't have a short to ground while we're up against that um, heat sink. Yep, that is fine, there is no short to ground. Okay, so now we need to make room for our oversized capacitor. This thing is a little bit too large. We might have to sit him right on the, uh, um, on the connection there. So we're just gonna scrape away I'm gonna scrape down to some copper here. Very badly, I might add. There's our copper, there's our ground plane. And we're just gonna turn that up. Oof, we're right up against that screw hole, but that's just a fan that is screwed in from the other side. So there's no penalty for being up against that screw hole and it's a ground point anyway. So let's get some more heat on there. And now we need to tidy up. And I think we're gonna to have to take off the heat sink for this bit just so I can physically get to the back of that capacitor. However, considering how hot the heat sink is, I'm bloody glad that I did leave it on. In fact, we might just remove this capacitor for a moment just so we can tidy up the big cap. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to get my solder blob out from there. No, that's gotta come out. That's annoying. Don't wanna be removing more bits.
Okay. And there's our new capacitor. Hopefully it still works. Okay, so we're now gonna get this thing connected up to a screen and see if we get display output and see if we can get through our tests uh, through the Apple service diagnostics. Okay, it still works, that's a good start. All right, so ASD has started up. We're gonna start running the tests. And with a bit of luck, it's gonna make it through all of them. Right, we're going to deselect the hard drive test because that will take a while and we really don't care about the hard drive right now. And Yep, let's go. Start testing. And we're going to say on error continue just in case it flags up any bonkers errors that we don't care about. Okay, so we're back into MacOS and we've got it running some super high definition video just to burn the graphics card a bit and just everything else for that matter. And as you can see, we've got a lovely crystal clear display. This thing is absolutely fine. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.